Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. I hope everybody's having a great week. Got another one up on the chopping block. Customer brought in their Craftsman T110, 42 inch, 17 and a half horsepower Briggs and Stratton riding lawnmower this week. Said, you know, those words I hate to hear. It lags to start. Sometimes you have to turn the flywheel to get it into that honey spot so it'll turn over. But unfortunately, this one goes a little farther. He said when it does start, it runs away on itself. And that's not good. All right, so I've already made an extremely detailed video a long time ago about how to replace the camshaft, but I didn't really go over how to diagnose and make sure that you need to tackle this big job. So today we're going over every step you need to do to diagnose to find out if your camshaft and your Briggs 17 and a half horsepower is broken. So first step, you've got to make sure that you've got a good battery. If you don't have a good battery, you're going to have to boost it to start. Now it could possibly act this way if you have a bad starter or a faulty ground wire, but if you have enough power going to the engine with your booster and it will turn over then, you know that the starter and the ground wire is not your issue. Let's see if we can start it and see what he's talking about. Compression stroke. There it is. It's it tight. We're going to get past that to where it's loose again. Let's see if it starts. Well, the battery's dead. Let's boost it. I'm going to give it a boost with my uh, jump starter, the Gulu GT4000. Now, this thing is the one that I've left in the description box below all my videos. These are excellent jump starters. We use the stink out of it. Now, but it will start this mower no matter what. Even if it has a valve issue or, or something internal, it's, it's going to turn the engine. So let's see what it does. customer said it was running away with itself which would make me think the governor's broke but it purrs like a kitten so I'm not sure let's check the valves so you've got enough power going to your engine it will turn over and start so this narrows it down to either being a valve issue or a camshaft issue so now that we got it started and it's running next thing we're gonna do is check the valves now to check your valves or lash them correctly, you are gonna to wanna to take your shroud off. That way you can spin the engine as needed. You're uh, gonna use a 3 8 to remove two bolts in the back, two bolts in the front, and then you will have a quarter inch or a flat head to remove this bolt that's going straight down into the, the base behind your air filter intake. And I let it sit for a minute so it's not hot anymore. One of the first thing I noticed. Now, if you want to tell the year of your engine, all Briggs have a model type and code. These ones are located right here on the overhead valve cover. But the customer called and he thought it might be under warranty. And we told him, yes, it is under warranty if it's under two years. And he's like, no, I've had it about two and a half years. But looking at this code date with a 19, the first two digits of the code date is the year. So this is a 2019 model. So five-year-old tractor, I think he's had it a little longer. And from the look of this air filter and this plug, I'm going to say he's never serviced it.
Now, the first time you take your overhead valve cover off, it just has Permatex that holds it on, and they do sell gaskets for this. If you don't want to use Permatex, you can get a gasket. All right, we're going to start out with a little crash course on your valves, rocker arms, lifters. Okay, you have rocker arms. This is your exhaust. This is your intake. These are your push rods. You have a, one's probably aluminum and one is steel. Usually the aluminum one is the intake and the steel one is the exhaust and they are connected or not connected. They ride on lifters inside the engine that run against your camshaft. Now, as your engine turns, that is your intake opening up as it pushes the valve open and your exhaust is closed. And it is what it does, it's drawing a uh, fuel air mixture into the cylinder. And then as it keeps turning, the exhaust, it, it, as this is coming up, it's the piston coming up also, which makes it combust and the exhaust is opening to release. But what we want to pay attention to, since we know it was running well, uh, is this intake rocker arm here. First, we're going to want to know if it is lashed correctly. And to tell that, we're going to open the exhaust all the way up, which means our intake is completely closed. And I'm, you can move it this way, you can move it maybe a little back and forth, but what we want to know is if we can move it in and out. And if, like, I don't, I can't really move it in and out much. If you have your feeler gauge, you can check. Um, it's uh, three to five and five to seven on these these adjustments so pretty much just five on both of them while it's there i'm gonna slip it in here i do feel some grab so we know that it is adjusted correctly that's not our issue but what we're going to check is as it comes up and it's going back to close when it comes all the way out on this left side here right before it gets there your push rod and lifters are rubbing against the camshaft decompression trigger now, if your decompression trigger is broke, it's not going to do this little bump right before it, it fully comes out. So we're gonna turn it down. We're gonna go all the way down with the, uh, with the intake here. And as we come up, if it actually was going to hit the decompression trigger, you'd be able to feel a little bump when it hits it. This one does not do that, so we are 100% positive that the camshaft decompression trigger is broke. Now let me show you what it looks like if it is working. All right, so now we're gonna make sure that it's working. I'm sure it is, but I wanna show you as I turn the engine, we're going to go through the exhaust stroke, intake stroke, and as it comes back up, you're going to see it go up and see that little bounce right there? That is the decompression working. We have successfully fixed this engine. Now there are three reasons I believe that this happens because first of all, these engines are made with solid lifter flat tappet cams and they're just going to get out of adjustment no matter what you do. And the book suggests that you not only lash your valves every single year, that you also should lap your valves at least every 200 hours but nobody does this so it's something that you need to think about and something you need to get familiar with if you have this engine every year you're just going to have to remove that valve cover and lash them valves number two reason is lack of maintenance i mean your oil has got to be changed and along with changing your oil at least every year you're going to have to use a particular type of oil now you might think that you're able to just go to the store buy some 30 weight and stick it in your machine but that is not true at all small engines with having those where it rides on a lobe on the can shaft like that you're going to have to have oil that has zinc in it and most lawn mower oil does now i use briggs and stratton or kinetics and everything this is just the briggs sort of knockoff brand but all of them check that out have zinc in them so what does zinc do zinc it reacts from the heat and actually becomes a barrier for metal on metal so whenever it's rubbing against each other it doesn't wear out like this is an actual camshaft that comes out of one of these engines and the decompression trigger is completely broke off of it but you can actually see where it has been wearing on the cam lobe over time which i believe is from the wrong oil so if you happen to have this engine and you do not have a broken camshaft yet and you want to avoid this issue do these three things always adjust your valves once a year. Make sure to service your machine and definitely use oil with zinc.
But if you did watch this video and you found out that you need a new camshaft, I've already made an extremely detailed video. I will leave a link right up above. And I, some people say it's the best camshaft replacement video they've ever seen. So hopefully it helps you to save you some time, money, and frustration in the future. I'm also gonna leave an entire section in my Amazon store so you can find every single part you need to do this repair. If you find yourself coming back to my channel over and over again, think about hitting that subscribe button. It helps out the algorithm to make my videos shown to more people to save them time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found me at Facebook, find me at facebook.com slash chicanic. Find me on Instagram at The Real Chicanic or find me at chicanic.com where you can get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Thanks guys and have a great day.